Greetings and salutations. My name is Torden, and this is Advanced Voxelmancy 103, How the Wedge Was Won. This video is specifically about how the wedge is made and how you can use that same technique to achieve other points. Starting in the 200 series with Advanced Voxelmancy 201, we're going to start getting into how to use these tools to build things like slopes and eventually windows and ladders and all sorts of things like that. But this particular video is going to be um, another in the series of foundational videos that describe how to build the tools that are used for some of the more advanced techniques of putting pieces exactly where you want them. If you have not watched Advanced Voxelmancy uh, 101 and 102, I strongly recommend that you do so because I'm going to be referring constantly to pieces that I went over in those videos already. So I'm going to place a voxel in the center right here, grab our area select tool, our area uh, smooth tool, and bring it down to a point, grab our reactor, with our select tool, copy it, paste it right here, and you see that we have our starting uh, pixel. I'm calling this again a pixel because it is not a perfect point. This first step is about how to create the perfect points. So as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, in the center of this now is a little tiny cube, but each of the eight vertices is not touching each other. The blue one is slightly to the left of the green one, uh, and the orange one is slightly to the left of the red one. Our goal, the first step of our goal, is to make this corner. This is the perfect corner piece that isolates out the exact corner of a prime voxel, and our first goal is to get to that. The way that we do that is we take our shrunken center right here and we copy it and we come over here and we go over one to the right and place it and then back to the center and place it again so that our center voxel extrudes out to meet the offset one voxel away. We copy this, we undo twice to get the garbage out of the way and then we paste that in the here. So now we have our one voxel that's a line that's going from the center out to an offset one voxel away. We grab our smooth tool again and we shrink that down to our point again. And we go back to our select tool, grab our reactor, paste it around it. Now what we have is our imperfect point that is in the center of the voxel wall. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, place that over here. All right. Now, if we take our center right here again, but we grab just two or four actually of the corners. And we come over here and we place it there. And then we take this and we remember there's uh, existing dominance. So the four corners that I put there are going to win, uh, but the other ones will place there. And so what we wind up with is a reactor that is a line that runs between the center and the sidewall. We're going to grab that one copy it out, come over here, grab our shrink tool, shrink it down, grab another reactor, put it around it. Now we have a location that is halfway between this. So you see we're a quarter of a voxel in from the center here and a quarter voxel in from the side wall here. All right. 
So we save that. Now, if we offset this, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the center of this. Let me go over here. And again, we go over one to the right, paste it into the center, paste it. Copy out that voxel, undo twice, go up, shrink this, grab a reactor, So we offset our corner and then shrunk it. And you'll see that what we wind up with then is a quarter voxel outside the side wall. All right. So now we have that. Now, using the same principle again, if we copy just these four corners, Place them here. Grab our sidewall reactor. Paste it here. Now we have a short line that goes out from our sidewall, out a little ways. All right. So we go ahead and we copy that. Come over here. shrink it select it grab this reactor cut it out of here come over here now so this one was a ways away from the side. This one is between the f that one and our center. So it's still outside our center, but it's less outside our center than this one. And we repeat that process a whole bunch of times. So we're going to go ahead and set that down again. Now we can, we can, you can step, save steps here by only grabbing bits and pieces of this instead of saving the whole reactor. Um, but I'm doing it for clarity. So I have that one there. Grab our center, our side wall again. Go up. All right, now you see we have a slightly shorter line or a decent bit shorter line. Copy that out. shrink it grab a reactor go up one Copy that. Go up. And you see we have an even shorter line. And we copy that. And we shrink it. And we copy it out again.
Yes, this is long and tedious. The good news is, I'm giving this reactor away, or this uh, wedge away. So you don't actually have to replicate all of this. Or not for the 1 8 wedge in any case. So now we have a new space. We're going to go ahead and we're going to copy these. And grab our edge again. And again, you see we have a shorter line. We're almost there to where we want to be. So we copy that. Paste it. Copy that. Copy that. Paste that. And you see we have an even smaller line. Last time. Copy that. pasting that in there. I'm shrinking it. Back to our selection tool. Grab our reactor. All right. Now this reactor right here, if we come back over here, you can see I'm going to put this a little bit higher, actually, so we can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five, I believe. That gives us a slightly better view. Let's go down one more. Let's go down one more. All right. So this is our this is our new and latest reactor. If we grab our corner right here. Make a copy. Let's go ahead and pick a different color. I'm going to go ahead and make the whole thing black so it's a little bit easier to see. And we're going to go up. Now what I want you to notice is that the right-hand ones are actually quivering, but the left-hand ones are the, are the same. And basically what we have on this one right here is that those the, the blue and the orange are over, but they're right where the other ones are. The, the, do you see how, how that is? So if we take this reactor and we use the inside four from this one, sorry, the inside four from this one, and the outside of this one, I'll go ahead and grab the center too, Would help if I got it in the right place. Let's do that again. So we're grabbing. So this one is a shrunk version that is one voxel to the right of our normal sidewall. Apparently I've forgotten how to count. All right, and now we grab this and we paste it in here. 
and I don't want all the colors to change, so I'm going to do it this way. All right, so now what we have is the blue reactor, which actually was for the pixel that's one to the right of what you're looking at, and our sidewall reactor points are now in the same place, right? One is one pixel to the left and would have been one pixel to the right. So that makes them identical. Basically what we have now is instead of a cube, we have a wee little tiny flat piece where along this one axis, which for the lack of a better term, I'm gonna call the Y axis, uh, the reactors are in the same place. So blue is touching black and orange is touching black. All right. Now, basically, the way that you get to the perfect point is you repeat that exact same procedure along all three axes. So we take all of this, we take this point right here and we extrude it out to the half point and we find its half point and then its quarter point and then we offset its quarter point and then we start working our way back into the edge until we have two reactors, one that's along the, the sidewall and one that is one pixel out from the sidewall and we combine the two sets of reactor corners and now we have one that is only uh, wrong in one axis and then we repeat that entire thing vertically along the z-axis and then we get this. So this point right here is our corner point. Now, all the rest of the points are derived from the corner. Basically, you take our corner point and you extrude it out in one direction or the other and you shrink it down. But when you shrink it down, you wind up with an imperfect point along that axis. So you actually have to isolate the next point over in the one direction or the other, depending on what point you're looking for, and then combine four of the reactor corners from one set and four of the reactor corners from the other set to get back to your null point again. That was done for all of this for this one eighth wedge. Now, I'm going to tell you that uh, I have a few friends, uh, most specifically a friend Stan and Outlaw, uh, and his brother Outlaw, who did a lot of the um, mechanical work of putting together these wedges. I had done a previous version of this in, in a, another game several years ago uh, and taught the technique to, to Stan, who then um, he and his brother did a lot of the work putting these wedges together. It is a lot of work, which is why we're giving it away so you don't have to replicate it. So that is how the wedge was won. Starting in Voxelmancy 201, we're going to talk about slopes and how to create them. I hope you enjoyed this.